I've always thought of Bitcoin as a very binary investment, whether it goes from 80 to 8,000 to 6,000 to 3,000 to 13,000, it just, it doesn't matter. This is either zero or it's millions. I mean, can you play the clip in 2012 and 13 when it was at 200 and everybody was laughing at me on CNBC every time I would talk about Bitcoin? Um, where is it going? It's probably going to 100, then 150, then 200,000. My whole view with Bitcoin was always that it's much better to be pragmatic and, and lay out a moderate case, which is that it's a hedge in a portfolio um, against the sort of traditionalist financial infrastructure. What replaces the U.S. dollar? And here's where, if you want to just bear with me for a second, it's not Bitcoin that replaces the U.S. dollar. It is a stable coin of, you know, the traditional financial infrastructure. I mean, can you play the clip in 2012 and 13 when it was at 200 and everybody was laughing at me on CNBC every time I would talk about Bitcoin? Um, where is it going? It's probably going to 100, then 150, then 200,000. In what period? I don't know. Five years, 10 years, but it's going there. And the reason is because every time you see all of this stuff happening, it just reminds you that, wow, our leaders are not as trustworthy and reliable as they used to be. And so just in case, we really do need to have some kind of, you know, insurance we can keep under our pillow that gives us some access to an uncorrelated hedge. And it's going to eventually transition to something much more important. But for right now, you're just getting all these data points that prove this thing. It's just the fabric of society is frayed. And until we figure out how to make it better, it's time to just have a little uh, schmuck insurance on the side. and. Everybody's running in. It's just an incredible thing. I could never have imagined it. <laughs> My whole view with Bitcoin was always that it's much better to be pragmatic and, and lay out a moderate case, which is that it's a hedge in a portfolio um, against the sort of traditionalist financial infrastructure. And so many people would get mad because they would anchor on this extremist view that it had to be everything. It had to be the solution and panacea at everything. The problem with that view is that that's just not how you maximize demand. Right When you think about um, products that really get to scale, um, there's a simplicity. And what that simplicity gives is people a very simple decision to make. Do I want to use this or do I not want to use it? And so if you want, you know, for example, Bitcoin to get to mass market scale, the most powerful thing that you can do is describe it in simple, pragmatic terms that don't require zealous belief. Can I tell you something about Bitcoin, which is so important? It's So I think Bitcoin is very important because it just shows the fragility of you know the traditional financial infrastructure, um, and if you just look at the quantity and the size of like the M2 money supply as an example, the real question that I think people should be asking ourselves is: Okay, if Bitcoin becomes a de facto reserve currency that basically displaces gold, what replaces the U.S. dollar? And here's where, if you want to just bear with me for a second, it's not Bitcoin that replaces the U.S. dollar. It is a stable coin. And what does all of that mean? In less fancy language, there are companies around the world that are replacing one fixed US dollar with one digital token of a US dollar. And by simply making that small abstraction, they're able to completely build financial rails that didn't exist before on ramps and off ramps to trading, to asset management, to banking, to payments processing. There's a revolution happening. It's not felt as much in the United States because people don't see it because the financial services infrastructure is so robust. But when you look at the developing world, and if you look in any market where there is any form of currency manipulation or currency instability, that's the future. And so, you know, Bitcoin is a canary in a coal mine for a completely virtual, um, largely anonymous, and we can debate whether that's good or not, um, financial reality. Um, and so, you know, I think that it's, a, it's a very important trend that's worth understanding. The other thing is, so many of the dislocations that we've seen um, won't happen anymore when we go on those rails. So, you know, going back to this whole GameStop debacle, 
as I've learned more, and as you probably know now too, you know, a lot of this has to do with the arcane way in which stocks are settled. I've started an insurance company that's doing a bunch of um, very, very uh, esoteric, exotic um, insurance policies. Um, and, you know, one of the interesting things that I've learned with my co-founder, my partner in this, he's the CEO, I'm, I'm just the chairman, but um, is how many of these corporations view their balance sheets and, you know, how they're buying all kinds of esoteric insurance. And the instant thing, Raul, that pops to the top of my head is, wow, these guys should also own Bitcoin as something like that. If they're going to own cat bonds and they're going to own business interruption risk insurance and all kinds of, you know, hedges on PMI, my gosh, why don't they own some Bitcoin? Well, it's because the presentation of that idea is done in such a, in such a way where they're forced to make a leap too far. And because if you if you decompose what the treasurer, the CFO is, is how the lens in which they're making decisions, it's just career risk, right? It's it's that it's that old adage. It's just it's you're never gonna get fired for buying IBM, right? And so you're never gonna get fired for just having the money sit in a corporate account zero with earning zero at JP Morgan, then you know, pounding your fists on the table for Bitcoin. Um, so what we need is again more pragmatism around what it is. Um, I've I, I've always found the presentation of the idea as uh, a deeply fundamentally uncorrelated hedge to the existing financial infrastructure to be kind of boring, not that salacious, but very pragmatic and effective. I've always thought of Bitcoin as a very binary investment, whether it goes from 80 to 8,000 to 6,000 to 3,000 to 13,000, it just, it doesn't matter. This is either zero or it's millions. I think Bitcoin needed a moment like this um, for it to be relevant. Um, in 2003, oh, sorry, 2013, um, I bought a lot. And at one point, I think I had almost 5% of all the Bitcoins. Uh, my basis is about 80 bucks a coin. Um, I've never bought more. Um, most of my Bitcoin now sit with a company. Um, and, you know, they use it for trading purposes. They use it to run uh, a bunch of other strategies. And uh, I did that mostly for safety and security and peace of mind. I didn't want to deal with it. Um, I wanted to own equity in a business. Um, that equity can be hedged. That equity can be tax structured advantageously. And then it allows them to run a big business, which generates cash. And I can get a cash and, you know, dividends. Um, so I have not bought since I uh, initially uh basically wrote that article for Bloomberg in 2015. Um, my thoughts are the following. Right now, I think what you're seeing is that it's still a speculative instrument and it's too speculative for it to be reliable. Um, so if you're going to make the case that, you know, it should replace fiat currency, well, one thing you have to look at is the volatility of the US dollar and you can't replace it with something that's nine sigma more volatile. It doesn't work. Um, where is it going? It's probably going to 100, then 150, then 200,000. What replaces the US dollar? And here's where, if you want to just bear with me for a second, it's not Bitcoin that replaces the US dollar. There are companies around the world that are replacing one fixed US dollar with one digital token of a US dollar. And so, you know, Bitcoin is a canary in a coal mine for a completely virtual, um, largely anonymous, and we can debate whether that's good or not. Pops to the top of my head is, wow, these guys should also own Bitcoin as something like that. If they're gonna own cat bonds and they're gonna own business interruption risk insurance and all kinds of you know hedges on PMI, my gosh, why don't they own some Bitcoin? I've always thought of Bitcoin as a very binary investment, whether it goes from 80, to 8,000, to 6,000, to 3,000, to 13,000. It just, it doesn't matter. Right now, I think what you're seeing is that it's still a speculative instrument and it's too speculative for it to be reliable.